And welcome to this edition of The Currents Up Close for Channel 15 in Cedar Falls. It's my pleasure today to have a conversation with Bruce Verink, the Recreational Division Manager of Cedar Falls, and Mark Ripplinger, the Director of Public Works. And really what the, the goal today is to explain and have a conversation in relation to the Island Park Beach House. Uh, some exciting things are happening, always happening, at the Island Park Beach House. So it's my pleasure today to get the experts' opinions uh, answers to questions and to be informative for the citizens of Cedar Falls. So welcome to both you gentlemen. Thanks, Thank Mayor. you very much. Really, I, I have a few different questions. And again, I think this could be more conversational than anything else because you folks are the experts. Uh, even someone as, as myself uh, don't know everything about the Island Park Beach House. So this is exciting for me in terms of getting that information out and making it appropriate for uh, the citizens of Cedar Falls to enjoy. So uh, Mark, if you can give us a little history of the Island Park Beach House and the process and construction, where, where we've been and where we are right now. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Right now at this point, um, the Island Park Beach House has been reconstructed. Um, it was destroyed in the 2008 flood, which the community probably will remember is the largest flood on record. Uh, we went through uh, quite a bit of a process um, to get it rebuilt. Because it's in the floodway, uh, there were numerous agencies that had to approve the project. Uh, City Council, of course, had to provide their input. And um, uh, it took quite a while. Uh, the, to begin with, we had an initial design that uh, the beach house would be two stories. Well, it ended up being that that really didn't work very well and it was cost prohibitive. So we went back to the drawing board and uh, came up with the design we see today. Uh, the floor plan you can see there on, on the screen is basically the floor plan that we had in place. A few different things, the bathrooms on the exterior now in, instead of the interior. But the facility itself is about the same size as it was previously, and uh, which of course was necessary because we, since we're in the floodway, we were only able to build in the exact same location. The, the facility we see um, today was mirrored after the original facility that was built back in the 1920s when it was, was part of the swimming beach and um, uh, was, was utilized by the community at that time. So our architect was able to mirror some of those uh, original designs into the uh, facility we see today. Fantastic, looks great. Boy, you go from where that flood was and the teardown that took place and now the building that's there, it's quite a jaunt from beginning to finish. And where is this building? And again, I'm trying to kind of convey to most folks who may not just realize They've driven by it many a times, but they don't understand that that is the Island Park Beach House, and there's some things that they can take advantage of. Where is the building located physically? Well, that's a good question. It's in Island Park, of course. It's on the southernmost tip of the park. And as you um, are in Cedar Falls proper, which was, would be south of the river uh, at this point, you would cross the Center Street Bridge into northern Cedar Falls, and right there as you um, are, are uh, crossing the bridge, take a look to your left, which of course is west, and you'll see the new facility. Um, the parking lot's the same configuration, uh, everything is in the same location, um, but uh, what you see is a, is a newer, bigger, better version of the facility. Absolutely. And so, I didn't even realize this, but there's actually, uh, there's a season involved. There, there's a, a, a start time and an end time. Bruce, what does that season look like in terms of, of the dates? Yeah, our season is actually May 1 through October 15th. And the reason for that is because it's an unheated facility. So we have to sh turn off the water and make sure we get everything winterized in that. So those people wanting grad a location for graduations, summer events, uh, fall programs, in conjunction with early football games or something, it's a great season for to be rented to, during those events. That's perfect. I was going to ask what sort of events have been held in the past and what can, can folks look forward to in the future. And there are specific hours that it can be rented and used? Yes, it's basically from 8 a.m. until 10.30. Uh, the park actually closes at 10.30 by ordinance, so all events have to wrap up in the park by that time. So that includes the cleanup after a rental. Sure, sure. And how old does a person have to be to rent a facility? They have to be at least 21 to sign that legal contract. Yeah, that makes sense. And we have a lot of parents that will come in and rent for youth that want to have a dance or something, live band or something of that nature in there. 
And I know there's probably materials folks can get. Maybe we'll get to that later on in terms of where they can find that information. But what, what is the actual cost to rent the facility? The actual cost of renting the facility Monday through Thursday for the east two-thirds is $125. Uh, for the entire building, it's $175. Friday through Sunday plus holidays, it's two hundred for the east two thirds and two seventy five for the entire facility. And that obviously is a lot of information. Do we have that written down aside from the TV screen? For yes, folks we do. We have that also idea. on our website under the beach house and that information. Excellent. And you mentioned two thirds of the facility and different options. It's just different size for what might be needed in the venue. Correct. Uh, the graphic on the screen now shows the red is the east two-thirds side, and the, then you have the entire building, which would be the red and the green there. And how far in advance should someone uh, uh, be keen to in, in relation to making sure they can lock that like in? Like all our facilities, it's one year in advance, so be thinking about what you want for summer uh, coming up or the, a year or two down the road. A lot of people plan wedding receptions, uh, that kind of thing, neighborhood block parties, and that well in advance, so you can reserve that, the beach house, or any other shelter one year in advance. So if, if one is looking to rent it out uh, yes. in the near future, um, what, what does the beach house have to offer? The four walls and tables or chairs, or what, what, yeah, what's there for It's them? basically, once you get inside, it's pretty plain. Uh, there's not a lot of obstructions or anything there. It's pretty open, as you can see from the show. Uh, ample windows to look out, to enjoy the park, enjoy the water, the river, and that. You have baffles that help kill some of the noise. You have uh, 180 chairs in the entire facility. You have 30 tables that can be set up in any arrangement you want. If the renter feels like they need more tables they can or chairs, they can always bring those in. You know, and we hope that the facility, there's no tables and chairs set up when the renter gets there. Mm -hmm. So that way they can pull out what they need, set it up accordingly. If they don't want all of them, they don't have to use it. If they want an open area for a dance in one end and, uh, you know, uh, tables for food on the other end, that's up to them how they set it up. Excellent. So there's some core things there. Depending upon the event, they can add to or subtract and, Correct. and, and enjoy. You know, the there's home. permanent fixtures, there's uh, fans there. so. People can turn the fans on on a really warm day. You have a stainless steel counter and sink. You have outlets around the facility. There should also be some outlets right directly above the serving counters that are built in. Uh, windows open easily, so on the uh, warm days, the sun heats the facility, so there is no air conditioning in there unless you open the windows and get the cross breeze, but it's a uh, great facility for the public to use. There's no doubt. Looks great on TV there. And, and like you said, folks have to be mindful that there is no air conditioning. So if, if they're looking for things not to melt or to be Correct. prepared in terms of attire, they need to, to think that thing through. Unless it's October and then natural air conditioning. They'll need some heat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, Mark, uh, you mentioned initially with how this got established uh, with the flood. What, what happens if the facility does flood? Well, the new facility uh, was built to be floodable. Everyone remembers the previous facility. It was made out of uh, two by fours, uh, wood, um, basically old time construction. As you see on the screen right there, there's an example of what is required by building codes to let water come in to the facility during flood and then automatically leave the facility during the flood. So the facility, of course, is, is uh, built out of block, uh, it's reinforced. Uh, when the facility was constructed, engineers were um, obtained and required to uh, verify that the, the building itself could withstand flooding. So what we see today is again, just an improved version of what we had previously made out of current, um, uh, current uh, building standards that would um, allow flooding to occur. So it's thought through the process. Obviously, if we lose it once, let's don't lose it again and That's built correct. that way. Yes. So as it applies to real world, if I'm ready to have a dance uh, and it does flood, how does the city handle uh, the rental fee, the deposit, those sorts of real world things? Basically, once, the, once we know flood water is coming up, we will call those people that are, have the facility rented. 
inform them that the flood is inevitable, that it's coming our way and that they could plan accordingly. We will try to guide people to other facilities that we might have available in the city, but ultimately it's the renter's obligation to find another facility to use. Sure. We will refund the rental fee, deposits will be returned and that kind of thing. So the city does a pretty good job in that real world possible scenario. Correct. To communicate, let folks know what's going on, help find alternatives. Correct. Excellent, excellent. So now uh, uh, I want to plan this event at, at, at the facility. Uh, can I serve beer and alcohol and, and, and that sort of thing in terms of, of what kind of, of, of program I have? You, you can serve cans of beer. You can serve wine and that type of thing. And basically when you stop in at the rec center to sign the contract, we will ask you all sorts of questions. Okay. When you stop in to reserve it, we ask the uh, rental fee be paid at that time. And then we'll have a form there. Are you have, planning on having the amplified music? Are you planning on a keg? Are you planning on a bouncy toy uh, for the pit that the kids have? Sure. Uh, then we have forms that all that stuff has to be filled out for the noise variance or the, for the keg permit and that. So all that stuff can be done there at the rec center. We do have a security deposit on the facility. It's uh, 500 for the east two thirds, uh, 170 or I'm sorry, 750 for the entire facility. And then if you have a plan on having a keg, it's an extra $250. The nice thing about the security deposit, people think will look at that and think, oh my God, is that high? But if you take care of the facility during your rental, you get all of it back at the end. So it's just to guarantee that the facility stays nice for the rest of the public to use. Absolutely. And insurance in relation to a bouncy house or security available, is that needed? Yeah, the insurance on the bouncy house is required by the city. Okay. Uh, and there again, on the form, when you stop in to sign the contract, that'll be a form and it'll tell you where to turn that in, how to fill it out and that. Very good. Um, and, and you mentioned before in relation to communication piece, the city, the rec center will have uh, how do, you, how do you pick up a key? How do you actually get the ball rolling in relation to, to yeah, signing actually, up and going? Actually, start the process by just, if you wanted to, just to check on available dates, call the rec center. We can give those out to you over the phone. To actually perform the rental, you have to stop in. And then once your rental gets there, we will have a fob ready for you to pick up 48 hours before your rental. So you can stop by, pick up the fob that'll be programmed to let you in on the day of your rental at 8 o'clock in the morning or any time thereafter until 10.30 at night. So you wave the fob by either the east or the west entrance door. Uh, wave that there. The light turns green. You open the door. And then on your set of keys, you have an actual turn down key to lock open the front doors so people can come and go without a fob. And then they also have a a water spigot key and a key to the storage room where they find all the tables and chairs and trash bags to be used. So they're in control. I mean, they're, yes. they're there and they can access. It's their facility. Excellent, excellent. So practical things as we sort of wrap this up, um, and, and maybe we saw it through with the, the, the images before, but refrigerator, microwave, a stove. Unfortunately, none of that is there. DNR, in order for us to build the facility in the floodway, mm -hmm. We could not have those facilities there. But people can bring in a big cooler or multiple coolers. They can bring in their roaster, their crock pot, and that kind of thing. And we should have ample electrical outlets for them to use and hopefully not blow circuits. Definitely. Uh, real practical question. Restrooms available? Yes, there are. Uh, the nice thing about the restrooms that we put with the beach house is there can be used 24-7 by people using the trail or that. So if you have the beach house rented, the parks department goes in and they actually clean the restrooms and restock everything on Fridays and Mondays. So if you have a Saturday rental, we hope that it's still looking good and that for the rental on Saturday. Very good, very good. Um, I guess folks, once again, can stop by the rec center. They can call the rec center. Um, you gave the numbers and potential uh, attendees that can uh, attend an event. 
Uh, is it a safe assumption that parking's available? No problems there? Correct. Ample parking. Well, the parking is, you have enough parking, but it might be a little ways away. Uh, we have a parking lot right there in front of the beach house that can be used. Then you can, we have a lot of people on the bigger events park in Tourist Park and then walk underneath the bridge. We have other people that park in other locations there in Island Park in the other parking lots located up by the uh, municipal boat ramps, okay. the two of them that we have. There is a plan for us to work on the current parking lot and increase the size and make it more functional, but that's something that probably won't happen for at least uh, six months to a year. Very good. Last question I have for you. Uh, it's a wonderful facility. It's, it's durable, sustainable, as you mentioned earlier, Mark, in relation to being floatable. And so we have uh, this outdoor portion of it, the indoor portion of the building. Uh, can folks access the river from the, the beach house, or do we to look at the river, look at the views? How, how is that interaction there? Yeah, we have on the back side or the river side of the beach house, we have, uh, I think, eight picnic tables sitting out there. Those are under a canopy. You can you have green grass between you and the actual bank. We do have uh, boat rent or boat docks there. So to actually gain access to be able to walk up and put your hand in the water, you'd actually have to walk up river a little bit, uh, probably a couple hundred feet to get close to the bank where little Johnny can throw a rock in the water or that kind of thing. Perfect, perfect. Well, uh, can't thank you gentlemen enough for the information in relation to the Island Park Beach House. Uh, what a great facility, what a great uh, quality of life. Once again, Cedar Falls has been able to establish for uh, many, many folks to enjoy throughout the year. So thanks to you both. And this right now, I think we'll wrap up this, uh, this edition of The Currents Up Close. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks, Mayor.